So the virus we're concerned with right now is called SARS-CoV-2. But this is not the first coronavirus that we have we've, we've interacted with in the last few years. So way back in 2003, which I can't believe it was that long ago, but there was something called SARS, S-A-R-S. And SARS is an acronym for Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. And at the time, people were very concerned about this virus. Um, as you compare the impact of that virus on what we're experiencing today with, uh, with COVID-2, uh, it's really kind of minimal. I think there were something like 8,000 people infected worldwide by SARS, and 800 people died. Now, that's terrible. But again, it doesn't compare at all with what we're experiencing with COVID-2 right now. But that was SARS in 2003. And then in 2015, there was another coronavirus that was in the news. It's called MERS, M-E-R-S. That was Middle Eastern uh, Respiratory Syndrome, you know, MERS. Uh, and it also had sort of a minor impact, even though people were aware of it as a new virus that had emerged and it was infecting people in pockets around the country. Not nearly the, the distribution, not nearly the number of cases, not nearly the number of deaths is what we're experiencing right now. So then, <clears throat> in 2019, toward the end of the year, this virus came along. And by this virus, I'm, I'm talking about what we call sars cov 2 uh, and it causes a disease, COVID-19. So COVID is Coronavirus Infectious Disease-2019, because it was first reported, I believe, in December uh, or late in the year in 2019. So where, do these, where, where did COVID-2 come from? Where do all these coronaviruses come from? They normally infect other animals. Uh, and in the case of coronaviruses, it sounds as though the primary host animal are bats. Now bats, we have bats in the US, but uh, they're not nearly as, as numerous and, and as many of them as you find in other parts of the world. So coronaviruses infect bats and do relatively little damage to bats. It's sort of endemic, I believe is the word that virologists use. It exists there without really harming the bat uh, very much, but it can replicate at some sufficient level so that there are always lots of viruses in these bats. Now, it has been estimated that there are as many as 5,000 different coronaviruses in bats. Is it important for you to know that number? No, but Here's an instance in which I would encourage you not to just listen to what I say and chalk that up as another fact that you're going to remember about coronavirus. But you should ask yourself, why can I say that? Why can anyone say that there are 5,000 different coronaviruses in bats? How would you go about actually arriving at that conclusion? Now, coronaviruses, you can see them barely with an electron microscope, but they're just these little tiny little circular bundles on the surface of some cells that they're budding from. And you certainly can't distinguish one from another with an electron microwave. So how can I say there are 5,000 different ones? And if we had more time, I would pause and I'd let you really think about that. But uh, we don't have time, so I'm going to ruin it and just give you the answer. The answer is in this genome. Remember I said this was what, 29,811 nucleotides long. So the fact is today we can determine the nucleotide sequence of any RNA. So if you go around the world sampling, I don't know, blood or maybe feces from bats and you can sequence the viruses that you find there and you can then line up, you can align the sequence of the RNA genome of one virus from that bat in Indonesia with another virus from a bat in Africa. And you can see that they're not identical, that they're different. Uh, so that's, that's the basis for people saying something like there are 5,000 different coronaviruses in bats. 
Now, do all of these infect humans? No. But obviously, uh, in the late fall of 2019, probably, not certain, but probably in a wet market in Wuhan, China, a wet market is sort of like a farmer's market where there, there are lots of wild animals, lots of domesticated animals being sold both for food or for pets. So there are some pangolins. There were some pangolins, spiny anteaters in this market in Wuhan, China. And it is believed by most people that there was a single coronavirus in one of those animals, whether it was directly from a bat, it jumped to a human, or it was a virus that went from a bat to a pangolin, and then from a pangolin to a human. But it appears that there was a single variant, single coronavirus with a very unique nucleotide sequence, which provided it with the ability to, rep or to infect and then replicate very efficiently in human cells. And about the only thing that you can say with, with complete certainty is that it appears that it was a singular event. It wasn't like there were a hundred viruses that jumped. One virus with one sequence that jumped and infected a single person. The virus started to replicate and it was very infectious and it was possible for that virus to spread from human to human to human to human to human. So from one event, this virus started invading the human population. Hi there, Mark here, a colleague of Dr. Tim Hermans. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other coronavirus resources available at www.3dmoleculardesigns.com slash scienceofcoronaviruses.htm, including a paper modeling activity where you can create your own physical model of a coronavirus. We hope you enjoy, and thanks.